on a meeting order. It's a regular session, October 10th, 2022, and we're going to call for a moment of silent prayer. Needs to add to the agenda. If not, I need a motion to approve it. I second. All in favor? Aye. All the motions carried. Approval of the minutes. Any questions on that? Looked like everything was in order. I need a motion to approve it. I'll make it. I second. All in favor? I'm not going to vote for here. I wasn't here either. All right. I'll, I'll vote in favor of it because uh, it's, I think it's correct. But uh, anyway, that motion, motion carried. The financials, accounts payable. Any questions on that? I need a motion to approve and everything looks like it's all right. I approve. Second. All in favor? No. Right, motion to carry. Financial report. Any questions on that one? No. Need a motion to approve. Apple. Second. All in favor? No. All right, motion to carry. On the appearance that we got Sean Watson, Super B Express, uh, county property purchase. You want to come up here and talk to us? Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Sean Watson. Thank you for your time. Uh, we would be interested in purchasing the Department of Ag, that little area right there. We want to put diesel lanes in it. Uh, we're doing a full remodel at this time. But that would be for like a year and a half until we can put a travel center some of that lines with not only a travel center, but a franchise fast food. Present it to y'all and see if it's up for consideration. Selling that property. Or you talking about the whole ag center over there? You talking about the whole all the way through. All the way the building and everything. Building and everything. And we just basically we're gonna knock it down. We thought about even incorporating it with the park behind it, like putting a real nice parking lot or maybe a dog park, something that when you're coming into town. The first thing so you're going to buy the other place right there, the federal state building? You already made a deal on that? Well, it's all... Contingent on everything. Yeah. I got you. I got you. I'm uh, but real aggressive. We'll make something real nice. Something the city county can be proud of. You got any like plans you could show us? No. I was called last week. Oh, okay. said you didn't hear, and I told him I didn't have any kind of architecture or anything like that. But we could expedite that real quick immediately acquiring the building next door gives us access to where we can have a rear exit of the store angle parking lots coming in because i mean there's really no place in town where you can get in and out easy right, right. so if we could get this all to the right of us we have access coming in a piece of lanes where that next building side of us is and then just roll it on the ground, parking for about a year and a half because we're three. We're putting complete new bathrooms in the back of the store where the subway used to be. All of that is going to be nothing but restrooms in the back. Um, where the 
to the left of where the coolers is when you go over the door. That entire wall is going to be knocked down to where the stores more open, new floors, or redoing the entire kitchen. But if we could acquire <laughs> that, it'd give us about a year and a half. It takes about 10, 11 months just to get the tanks, diesel tanks, to put in the ground. So architectural plans, everything else. It'd give us about a year and a half, just over two years, to recoup from this. Get every all the ground level work done and put something real nice in town. All right. Well, whether we do it or not, we've got to find another place. That's the county agent's office and all that right there. We're gonna have to find another piece of property and see by the building and all. So we we got to have some time also. How, how quick? Well, the, that can all be worked out. I mean, because if Y'all are having to do something on your side. This first building right beside of us, we could knock it down and that would fix our parking. Possibly even put, go ahead and architecturally justify <clears throat> putting the diesel lanes in with the foretold knowledge that we're going to put a travel center behind it where it just complements what we do and not have to backtrack. And then when we get to that point, it would be pretty close to y'all in that year and a half, two year time frame. Okay. So can you give us a month? Can you, yeah. give, you give us a month? If you, you go ahead. You want us to contact you again, or you want to come back to the next meeting? Whatever. I whatever think if you could, if you could get us up, maybe like a preliminary drawing, or okay. kind of what you want, and maybe you want to go ahead and talk about the offer. I do, but what y'all willing to pay? Right. I think I think that'd be the, and then we can kind of start moving. We'd have to look about because probably we I don't know that there's another building that we could acquire. It might be just to make a, a move. Right. We'd have to see about that right there. If we got to build one from scratch, it's all that's all about. Yeah, all we're going to have to work that yeah. all out. Yeah, um, so, but give us a month. And, I mean, anything that you could get us in that time, we could be talking and looking. Happy to. Uh -huh. all right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. okay. Appreciate it. All right, so uh, next on the pinch, we got Keith Bowen. Keith, you want to update us on? Yes, sir. Uh, just like, and once again, thank y'all for allowing me to speak to y'all that y'all have in the past. Uh, I'm coming talking about uh, the election integrity like we have several times before. Uh, in the past, uh, we've all understood that the, the, the QR codes that are on the ballots now, when you vote in person, are unconstitutional. It was ruled that way by U.S. District Judge Amy Totenberg. We already know those are unconstitutional. You hear nothing to build people's confidence up in our election system. This is constantly a, a drumbeat of negative stuff out there. And now the things that I'm coming to y'all about is trying to help build up confidence once again in our election system. I'm not asking us to do anything that we're not already doing. Uh, I don't know how many of y'all were here when when you took, when y'all we had the Zoom meeting with a. Uh, uh, the voter GA uh, and his recommendation is to use uh, the absentee ballots we're already using now. Those already are approved, you already have scanners for it, you already have everything and it, and it doesn't matter one iota if you're a Republican, a Democrat, an Independent, it, it don't matter. I just want people's votes counted the way they intend them to be counted, the way they to cast them. And right now what, what we have, if there's a recount, it recounts a QR code, and we don't know what it is. When you come around a circle, I graduated from Southern County High School, and I can see a circle colored in, I can figure out what that means. And that's what, when everybody can see that and have confidence in it, we can build from that. I, I know y'all probably saw the news where that uh, Conic company got caught storing information in China. They're supposed to be keeping poll workers' information. Some counties in in Georgia, use that company for the poll worker stuff. I checked with Judge Josh, and our county does not. So none of our poll workers' information is somewhere where it shouldn't be. But it's just a constant drumbeat of nothing but negative stuff about our election process. I'm not talking about the the candidates, and I'm not talking about who the vote. I'm talking about the actual process of casting the ballot. And that's what I'm coming before y'all to ask if, if we can just. And I found out through all this, and like we've talked before, that the county commissioners in our county, since we don't have a board of elections, the county commissioners have the right to change stuff up. 
And I'm just coming up before y'all tonight to ask if we can vote to use absentee ballots on day of voting here in Montgomery County, Georgia, to start the process of building up confidence in our elections once again. You're talking about this election coming up? I would prefer that. Keith, I, I, I'm getting mixed signals with this right here. I mean, some some of them saying that this all this stuff's got to go before the legislature because they already got a process in place. And I'm not, I don't know, you know, whether we could actually do that or not. I mean, I, I, that's what I'm finding out. The legislature's already got an election process in place and guidelines about who uses absentee ballots. And I ain't got no problem with, with working with that right there, but I don't. I don't know we, whether we could do that right now or not. Well, I can understand your concern, but you know, I, I brought y'all the information in the past that where there's a question of legality or impracticality that the commission, <laughs> since we don't have an election board, it falls on y'all shoulders. If there's an election board, they would be the ones that would have to do it. But since we don't, and I know we're in the process of yep. kind of sort of going to get one sometime in the future, but that that's why I'm of the of the believe that we should just go ahead and do something because if we wait for the perfect time uh, Layton's done enough farming ain't never perfect time you sometimes you just got to do something and you'll find out later if it was right or wrong but sometimes you got to do something and and I don't want anybody to do anything if this was against our state constitution I would not be asking y'all to do anything this would be that would be wrong for me to do that I'm on we're gonna get the county attorney and get his opinion. If, if we go to do this, I don't know whether we got time before the election to do it. If, if we do, we'd have to call a special meeting to vote this in. And I don't know. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just telling you, I, I don't know whether we do it. Or not. Understand. I, I've been waiting on some information from up the state also, and that's why I'm so late coming down here. You know. But I mean, have you. Uh, What you, what, uh, what we got here? I mean, uh, I mean, I ain't got. Have you got something you can pass on to us that, that was handed off to you that we could review? I don't have anything except what I've already given you before, and I've it's saved on the computer at the house. I don't have any with me here tonight. Okay. Is any other counties in the state of Georgia doing that? Uh, there's 42 or 43 different counties that have been approached about. Using absentee ballots. Well, but we actually agree I don't to do know it. of any, and this was like six weeks ago, the last time I heard of it. Mr. Garland was when I've been talking to the, from the voter GA. Uh, there's six, 42 counties. Most of them have a board of, a, of elections, a few of them have, uh, have counties. And, and folks, it's just like anything else, it's going to take one county to do it first. Well, I ain't got no problem with that, but. The fellow you're talking about, is, does he work with the state or is he no, just an independent? He's an independent. Uh, he's a, I think the fancy word is nonpartisan. He's not a Republican or a Democrat. He's just for voter rights in Georgia. Uh, to have the election done the right way. I'm going to talk to Josh tomorrow. Then he's going to contact the county attorney to see if this is even doable. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. In the time frame that it's in right now, I don't know where the, the absentee ballots, the process may be done once so far where all that's done been loaded in to be printed out. I don't know. And I'll be glad to set up another meeting between y'all and Mr. Garland if y'all and the county attorney if you need to get, because I can tell you a little bit of stuff about peanuts and cotton, but about in depth voting things, I would prefer someone would. The information that could, could answer questions out there. It's like Mr. Garland said that we ain't got to figure out a new process. You already got an absentee ballot process works, and there's no use to reinvent the wheel when you already got work. You already we've already got the readers, uh, you've got ballots and got everything that you could use. So there's no use of trying to rebuild something. So, and once again, I I'm not here trying to cause y'all any problems or me any problems or the county any problems. I just want people when they come and cast their vote, they can live and make it done and say, I voted for this one, this one, that that's exactly what I intended. They can go and put it in the scanner. And if some question comes up, 
anybody that's counting ballots can look and say, yep, that circle's called in. Sure. The way it is now, what you read on that ballot does not make a hill of things. That QR code is the only thing that that scanner reads. And we can't, none of us in here, we can't get an app on our phone to read it. It's impossible. No one except a Dominion machine can read it. And that's what makes it unconstitutional and illegal in our state because that is in our constitution that when you cast your ballot, you have to be able to read what you have cast. And if they don't, if they're not reading those things that's printed out, they're reading a QR code. If they count them a thousand times, how do we know they count them? Out? I just want confidence built back. Our, our country was founded on our free and fair elections. And our country is going to keep going downhill if we can't have confidence that what we voted for is what was counted. And that, that's what I'm getting back to. That's why I say it doesn't matter to me which way anybody votes. You might vote the right way considered to me or the wrong way considered to me. It don't matter. I want to count the way they intended the votes to be counted. And us to be able to go back and look and see. You said there's 1,200 votes here and we'll count them back a month or a year or two years and still be 1,200 votes. That's, that's all I'm asking. And we can do that with absentee ballots, with these Dominion machines. It is 100%. I don't say anything's 100% except the Bible, but this here is 100 you, you, you can never count them and know exactly what the person that cast them intended because we can't read the QR codes. All right. Let us talk with Josh. Talk to the county attorney. If we get an answer from them tomorrow, we'll get back a hold of you. Do I mean, you, you, your intentions are is to have this in this next November election. That's what I would love. I mean, and if it's possible, if we already have, a, I don't know enough about the process, but it'd be dangerous. But if we have enough absentee ballots already, we can get them printed up. We've already got the readers. Yeah, but is the public, I mean, how are they going, are they going to want one mailed out to them? Are they, when they get no, in the polls, do they want to? I'm using the absentee ballots in the day of, in place of the machines. Well, I don't know what public how they received that. I mean, I don't, I don't know. They've been I, used I to using the that. machine. I don't, I just don't know. Well, but anyway, we we worked toward the devil's advocate. A bunch of folks didn't like the machines. They could not either. It took some training for all of us people to vote it on. You know, in a, in a in a perfect world, they would be great. But we, you see every day how things are hacked, all this kind of stuff, and we don't know what all went on. But I do know that when you cover in a circle, I took standardized tests. In my esteemed college career of one year, you take a answer. And if you have a question, you can go back and look and you can see which one was called. And that's all I'm asking. I, you know, sometimes I know I make things a lot tougher than it's got to be. And this appears to be one of the times with our voting system. Uh, Technology is great, but when it don't work the way it was intended, it ain't it ain't that good. And we've all we've all been caught with a computer that crashed or something that don't work like you want it to. Let's, let's get it where it's simple enough where we can all understand. And I I say this and I'll quit. I, I took up enough of y'all's time. But I remember back when we fought overseas and then people in those countries that we were able to liberate, they went and voted and stuck their thumb in an ink well and they come out holding that thumb and they were so happy to prove they had voted. The simplest thing that's ever been in is you stick your thumb in an ink well to prove that you went and you voted and I've got proof. That's all I'm asking here. We can go, we can vote, we can color in the bubbles, we can cast our votes, and we know when we went back to the house that I voted and I voted the way I wanted to. And that's all. And if, and if the person we voted for don't win, we have confidence in knowing that, well, I need to pick a better candidate next time because I know what I intended to do work, work right. And that's all I'm asking. Thank y'all so much. Uh, appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Next thing we got on the appearance is Ronnie Sheffield, the road issue. Ronnie, you want to come up in and talk to us? Oh, uh, I've been speaking 30 years and I'm sure I'm out some notes, but I don't know everything I'm going to say. But I'm, I'm going to talk to you about Sheffield Road that goes through my property. I've got about a 350 acre field that goes right through this and it's kind of aggravating. And I would like to get it abandoned and take some of the heat off the county because if it belonged to me, the county wouldn't get sued for whatever happened out there. It'd be me. I'll be in jail. And I think we can make it a safer place. We're going to do away with the gates and get some signs about the size of them and some doors and put on each end, explaining that it's a private road. And if, if you go through and do something wrong and 
have an accident, tire something, but you are liable, not being not the Miller County. And uh, that's what we're going to do. We ain't going to get rid of the road because we need it worse than anybody. Um, did I miss anything? No. Um, <clears throat> it's, I mean, explained to everybody about the gates and how the thing. Yeah, well, the gate, the we've had the gates out there for about 15 years. I don't know how long the system's been on the road. But folks got to work there just to ignore the gates, just zoom right on in. And they don't reach, they don't ask nothing, just come. And we got to slow them down, stop them. So they go, they're going around the gates? Yeah, they got, got a road made around them. Of course, we do too sometimes, but we got to, you know. We're farming or child, I think. But what, tell us about the irrigation. What's What's the layout with the irrigation and, and why the road needs well, closing? Well, we put in the irrigation and the system was too long. It was had to go across the road about three towers or two. I don't know. And it's worked real good so far. And then I got two systems on the other side of the road. And they overlap out there and all that. But uh, so far it hasn't been a real problem. But I'm, I'm getting worried about these people just ignoring everything and zipping in and out. So at times the system is across the dirt road. Huh? At times, yeah, the system uh, about across the dirt two or road. three towers. I forget now. So if somebody yeah. would come through there, they could. Oh run yeah, that's the whole thing. If it wasn't, we wouldn't. I wouldn't be here. Right, right. But uh, and sometimes the systems almost hit each other. But I wouldn't get sued for that. I'd get pocketbook sued. <laughs> but anyhow, I think we can make it a, a lot safer and smoother, and I'm willing to do it. And right now, if, if something happened, Miller County is the, is the one to get sued. Of course, they'd sue everybody that's involved, me and Ty, the folks that work for Ty. But it is still a county road, is that correct? Do what? It is still a county road. Yes, if right now, right in Miller County. And that's what I was talking about. They would be, if something happened out there, they would get the big load of this lawsuit. And of course, they'd sue everybody that could, you know that. But anyway, I'd like to make a little more sense than did, but I ain't got none. You think anything else? Do y'all understand what he's talking about? Mm -hmm. But I've, I've seen these things done before, and to me, a big sign comes up that you can't miss. You know, they claim they didn't walk the road before the gates, because we ain't got real gates. We just got uh, bars across the road. They, they work. We we'll have to drive down. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll work on it if we forget the, uh, the road. Abandon. Uh, there's a lot more stuff we probably need to do, but I'll read into it. Thank y'all for your time. You got any more? You got any questions on for him about what what he's proposing, what he wants to do? I do want to ask something because I do know that Mr. Earl, I think, had had some concerns about that. So I was just going to see what you know what Mr. Earl's concerns were, so everybody could hear it at the same sure. time. Um, Mr. Earl, what are your concerns with it? That road was speaking about, he knew about the irrigation before he put on there. That road has been like that for 50 years before I even built my home. It's been a long time. When the, I'm speaking of it in a Sorry, Stevie. When I built my house, I built it on a county road where it would be maintained. And now all of a sudden, he's greedy for land, he's letting his irrigation walk across the county road. And I do not want that road closed or abandoned because once it's abandoned, you never get it back. And when it flows due to heavy rain, I had to go out that way. Earl, me and my wife. Let me, let me add something to that. When it rains and that road is underwater, between your house and the Bellevue Road, it's underwater on both ends of the other road. I come over there in the middle of the night one night over here and took y'all home. And if it had been a, an alternate route in there, y'all would have took it. It don't matter. I still don't want to live on a dead end road. That road was a public road ever since I've been born. And I do still go out that way. UPS trucks go that way. All the delivery trucks go that way. And it's not going to benefit nobody, Mr. Shepard. Well, he knew it before he put the irrigation out there. I have already spoke to my attorney and all that from the past, and he said one person objected. He was legal. Nah. Yeah. Well, nah. Emergency personnel, if they can't come in here, so they can 
They can't come in the other way. The road, when I took him home that night, in the morning, you know, Matt, you can't you can't go out either way. Well, I, was I, I had nothing to do with that. I didn't say that. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. You got on line. But can we ain't, we ain't gonna fuss. No, we can. We we here. We here to gather the facts now. Yeah, that's right. that's what we want to hear. We want to hear your side, but there ain't gonna be no fussing. No, I ain't fussing. I'm just speaking up well, my rights. I know what my attorney told me. And once the roads close, it's gone. Mr. Sheriffield will be gathering three more acres of land. Hey, and hey, I, 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 I'm speaking. I'm speaking. Go ahead. I already talked to him. I, this is old news to me. Mr. Al Morris knows because he was on the board back then. And, all. and I'm sick of it, too. Well, how is he gathering three more acres of land when they gave the land we to the road? That road. Go out there and measure 40 feet. His, his family gave the road to start off with. I can't tell that. It was a county public road. And Mr. Roscoe Sheffield sold me that land. Uh, he's not gaining. He gave the road I don't care about property. That. His I family did. I want to live on the whole land. I want it to be maintained. We divert the road. Excuse me? If we divert the road. Yeah, yeah. I don't want that. We're, we're not talking about that. We're talking about going around. We're talking about going around the field. The road is a hazard. That's that's what we're here to address. I wasn't monitoring that situation out there. I was on the board. I didn't give him permission to do that. Yeah, why have been stopped? Everybody else been stopped. They put the gates up there to stop the folks from traveling the road because it was a hazard. All that happened the four years I was out here. No, the county told you you was going to be responsible for somebody bread. That's what they told me. I was there to meet for my attorney. Now, let's tell that for facts if we want to talk. The four years I was out of here, that's when all that took place. Well, I can't have that. I know what I know. I know we've been here before. And at that time, the law was don't take one objection. That's right. Broken, I'll be closed. That's well, exactly what my attorney told me. Unless the law will change, and I'm not aware. It ain't changed. Well, we're going to consult with the county attorney about it. And if it's if it's uh, if it don't have to be a unanimous vote on this board and what you're saying, we're going we're going to check that too. But uh, we're going to take a vote on it next month, yes or no. And we're here to gather the facts tonight. Now, is there anything else? About this that hadn't been talked about that we need to know. Andy knows about that situation out there. He's been out there several times. Am I right, Andy? There you go. I ain't putting nobody on the spot. I'm telling y'all, don't do that to my road. Uh, it ain't your road. It ain't Ronnie's road either. It's the county road. Well, there's been other roads well, been closed, and they ain't. You don't have a house on the road now. I got the notion. Jerry's got somebody in his fellow house now. It's fine with him. Well, it's because it's your cousin. Yeah. Had you been a man and came to me to stalk me, it might have been different, but you've never done that, right? And you know it. You like jammed it down my throat. Earl, Earl don't 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 talk like that. Now we're here to gather the I facts. Tell the facts. That's facts. It's all right. Right. You, you got anything else you want to add to it now? I'm going to say I'm going to sue the county and I'm going to sue the county commission personally. One by one if y'all do. Well, if it ain't something life threatening, then I, I don't see no. What no, is going on? Ain't nobody, ain't nobody bothering well, us. Well, put it like this if somebody gets goes down that road. Mr. Sheriff needs to show his irrigation. That irrigation means a lot to him. That road means that much to me. Are they going to sue you if somebody gets hurt down there? Are they going to sue you? I ain't going to be no county commissioner after December. That's right, and I'm proud of it. Well, thank you very much. You're quite welcome. You've got a burden in my side. Earl, 
Right. You ain't, don't start. I ain't here to fuss. You ain't cooperated with, no, with no. Right, man. Don't sit there and say that. Listen, I, I, went, I went out of the way to yeah. take you home in the middle of the night down yonder. Yeah. I did. Yeah. And if I had some personal grudge, I wouldn't have went over there to get y'all. What you put the word out? Don't do nothing for Earl Cox out there until I approve. Who said that? Who told you that? Who, who, who said that? Who said that? I, I, I ain't been no ill feelings, y'all. I picked up. Listen. Let me tell you something. I'm coming. Let yeah. me tell you something. I went in the middle of the night and picked you up. There's no personal grudge here. Yeah, I picked you up and I picked Martha. Yeah. And if I'd have been a personal grudge, I actually picked Martha and her ailing brother over there on Highway 253. And she was toting a young and walking. And if I'd have, I had some personal grudge, I'd have went, turned the corner and went right on. You got to tell something else, son. Martha, I took you down there to Tommy Watson's one day. One morning, you and you and your brother, and you had a youngin on your hip. Your car was broke down at the end of the Babcock Road in 253, and I took y'all down yonder to Tommy Watson's. You ain't never take my wife, brother. I'm probably no. You ain't. I ain't gonna say that. What happened to the pipe that was laying around by the bridge? Yeah, what happened to them? Why, 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 why they all? Which pipe you don't? They laid there, right? Six months at the bridge. I ain't had nothing to do with the pipe. The pipes would have put it was put off there for whatever reason. Andy, you know anything about the pipes? I told you to pick up the pipes, not put them down. We decided not to put them in, and we moved. Who decided not to put them in? The board did. That's all right. The board voted on. Was the pipes there when I was a county commissioner? I don't remember. I don't remember who was county commissioner at that time, but we laid the pipe there, and we're going to redo that spot, and we decided not to do it and move somewhere else. I didn't tell them to move the pipes. But there's a lot, I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of stuff been started around here for the wrong reasons. Yeah, man, all I know is I tend to my own business. I don't see a bit of road. Even his cousins come in there and keep stealing the lane. And all that. I ain't going to hear all that mess, man. I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth like some of us. Oh, really? Don't start that right there because I tell you something right now. I had to work out the land out, Johnny. When I was a youngin, when my daddy had it on, and I've had to work it all out again and buy it all back from my family. You can wave over Okay, if you want can to. I just say this? People watch this. People are watching this. We need to keep it classy, guys, because we don't want people laughing at us. Well, it was a concern that was brought up I am concerned about. It's nothing meant towards Mr. Shepley, but that irrigation system is walking across that road, and that road is open, and we know it. That's right. It's a liability to the we're, county. We're going to get sued before it's out. I told y'all that night up by the little county courthouse. I wasn't there when the attorney came. I wasn't no county commissioner that time. So that irrigation system does not need to be allowed to cross the road to at least we get this thing resolved. Well, the crop's fitting to be out of the field. So they've been do they've been doing their own thing for I don't know how long. So it's gonna be put up for a vote one way or another. Layton found that land in there with almost don't he knows the situation. I know it'll make my life real unconvenient if y'all close that road. I do know that. All right. Is there anything else we need to go over with this? Any more facts need laying out here on the table about the road? Any any, any more information? We just need to make sure that we're well within the law. We're going to talk to the county attorney. Ever done. We're going to talk to the county attorney before we take over. It'll be it'll be voted on next month to, to do it or not. So if there ain't no more facts, we're going to move on. Any more information needs passing on or, or bringing out? I'm just trying to do underhanded not even tell me about something. What are you talking about? I didn't know nothing about it. About what? It's, not this big until it's on the agenda, Earl. The, the, the agenda's on Facebook. It's posted. It's yeah, that's all. That's how I And this right here, this is for this white reason for the meeting. We ain't voting tonight. I know you. Ain't nobody done nothing underhanded or wrong. Why is that? 
I don't want to hear no more of your sarcasm, Earl. I don't care what you want to hear. I'm telling facts. Well, don't get out of order. Don't get out of order. Because if you do, I'm going to ask the sheriff to escort you out of here. Uh, you love that anyway. I don't care. Well, that's enough about the road, then. We're going to move on. All right. Next time we got is the old business. We got Angela Hagen for the animal shelter, the tax abatement. That's me. Um, last month, we had asked for a letter from the accountant with um, the animal rescue. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That they couldn't quite give, they couldn't say that they could only, they're not even the ones that write the checks. Um, ARA is, they're the bookkeepers. But I did bring this, I think that might help. It's the lease, and it shows it's a dollar a month. Okay. Well, uh, look here. The taxes on that thing would be $2,600 a year. There was a, a contract brought over here to, you know, for the county to provide, a, I guess, payment for taking care of the animals. Oh. Do you know, you know anything about the contract? No, I don't. I don't. I'm just the landowner and the building owner and the... Um, well, and I mean, that, we're going we're gonna to run it by the board, but anyway, <clears throat> Contract would that would what? make that would take more that would be more important than my request. Well, we, we if you're wondering if you have to do one or the other, theirs would be more important. What is that funny? Well, I mean, we it it, it kind of. I think where he was going was we don't need a tax abatement. We we don't want to pay. Yeah, we we, we, we got to give we a tax abatement. We don't need to be go entering in into a contract. For, to provide care for the animals also. And the other thing, what, in, in a situation like that, and I ain't seen the contract, but um, the, uh, how, would, how would we document where the animals are coming from? Were they all coming from this See, county? Yeah, or? that is handled with this company, ARA, Carol Williams. She'd be the one that would have all the answers to that. And I could forward to her number. But like I say, I, I didn't realize there was a request in from them or something in the works. Okay. I don't want this. This should have nothing to we, do with we, that. We all, I think we are willing to work with you, but we, we kind of need to get the whole package together. I got you. Because, I got you. I mean, the, the tax abatement, and then we got the, the contract to, to enter into if, if we decide to. But we need some documentation. I mean, if we need to contact these people, uh -huh. or they contact us before we do anything because we got no way to document with all the dogs or cats or whatever are coming from Seminole County or, or where they're coming from. I do know that I was like there yesterday they, and there was a mama dog that was just skin and bones and her puppies and I asked where they came from and they said no account. How, how do they document that? I don't know. There's got to be some documentation, I promise well, if, you that. If, the people, if, if we get some documentation with the driver's license or something to that effect, saying these dogs with the people's address and all that right there on there, so we know that the animals came from here, that that would give everybody a little bit more comfort to oh. know that we ain't. So, so we're talking about if the sheriff well, dropped yeah, it off. Well, yeah, that would be, I, I would think that would be necessary. So that would be the only way we'd pay is if the sheriff dropped it off. I'm hard to hear. <clears throat> I'm hard to understand it, so. <laughs> so not, not. Is that right, Nikki? Am I reading that right? So if they want us to pay if y'all drop if you're paying on you or whatever the allocation crew. If, 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 if we got an animal in the contract, I think, y'all, if, if we got an animal, you know, that we and we put down, I think it'd be $100, because I know that's probably not in your part of it, it'd be $100. Here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that that, that well, we make we, sure I read it right. We would take them and and uh, if if we took one down there, you know, like uh, 
then they, they would charge a hundred dollars and twenty five dollars a day, I think, for three days. Fifty dollars and twenty five. Yeah, for, I think, or something. Like that. I know. Is that, am I reading it right? Yeah. But to my understanding, when that they wouldn't know, uh, just private citizens couldn't take an animal down right, there, you right, know, right, at the right. time. It'd just be one. If we got a call to one, well, like we had one the other, we like had that. one the other day out at uh, I think Rents Apartments out there. It was a dog, and of course. He was laying there with a chain on. We got a, and we we made animal cruelty charge against the owner of the animal. It died then the next day, mm -hmm. and but that was before the place opened. So we didn't, you know, we there was nothing we could do with the animal. We didn't take it nowhere. Right. And I don't know, to my knowledge, we hadn't took any down there, you know, at this point. But uh, it was just. Uh... Okay. But if this is just involving y'all or. And I ain't read this thing in no detail. Y'all are the, uh, like the uh, vet down there. He's, I don't know whether you know or not, he, he would, him and his uh, co-worker down there was designated as the, if there was a an aggressive dog, is to determine whether or not they were, right. he's the one that determines that, right. his yes. staff. And, and I, I, my understanding is Dr. Henley is gonna, was going to go down there one day a week and spade and neuter and operate at no charge. You know, he was going to donate his time one day a week at the facility down there. That's my understanding. Too. That, that was my understanding from from uh, from what the people that brought the contract said. Yeah, and I talked to Dr. Henley about it too, and he mm -hmm. he confirmed it. Mm -hmm. All right. Do y'all want to uh, give this some more thought? Yeah. Uh, what, what about, do we need to contact the folks? Because I, I don't want to get wrapped up in something here that. So that who do we need to talk to? Carol Williams. Carol Williams. You got that name? You got that? Con we, do we have that contact information? I'll get it for you. You got it, though? No. As far as tax, you know, you I, I don't know anything like about that. I don't know a week behind like that. You start taking like $100 a week down there. Yeah. Like that. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Uh, Miss Face said she would take about everything we would take. Good. So she, Good. she loves it. We're sitting on a third period, not big steam. So. And then I think they would adopt them out and, you know, yeah, charge. if it takes a year yeah. or whatever that takes, the rest is on them. Uh, we, let's, yeah, let's, we'll act on the contract next month. Um, do y'all want to make any decision about the tax abatement tonight? I think we'll wait until we see what okay, we should say. Uh -huh. yeah. okay. What'd you say? Put it all together. As a Can I give you your yeah. number just verbally? Yeah. Give it to that man over there. Eyes aren't as good as they used to be. We need to get her to come and talk to us too. Where she lives. That would definitely be good. I'll mention to her, and um, but she lives um, in the county. In Miller County or Seminole? Um, Miller, I think. It's right that, on the is line, that, though. It's Iron City. That's no, that that's Seminole, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's above Iron City, though. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll make contact with her. Okay. But I think we'll, we'll try to work something out to help y'all out some kind of way. You may, may not be exactly. I didn't mean to confuse you. No, nah, that's all right. It ain't no big deal. <laughs> we, we just, I think everybody's willing. They, they want to try to do something. But uh, yeah. we'll, we'll try to get it all together. Okay. Thank uh, you. Y'all got any more questions about anything? No. Okay. I right. appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. All right, next thing on the old business is the fuel station report. You got any questions on that? Okay. All right, Layden brought up here what I talked about a while ago, and we put it under the old business because we done talked about it. It was the bill for the pipe repair where the motor grader drug the pipe up out of the ground over at the irrigation pipe, and it was Israel Houston. 
you come up with a bill of $1,852.92 and he's got it on his phone and he's telling telling me a while ago that about half of that was labor. But he's got it buried like it ought to be buried in some brand new pipe. Do y'all want to pay for part of it, all of it, or how you want to handle it? Half of it's labor and half of it's material. And it, it wasn't really marked like it ought to be, but I think you need to do a little something for them. And it will grow up around it in bushes and everything else. You think it's fair to pay for the labor? I don't. Were we responsible for cutting around it? Have you no. said it goes up with it? No. It wasn't it wasn't marked real well, but I mean the man brought the bill to see if we could do something. It is something we need to do too, Craig. We'll probably run another ad and tell people we need to update that because you know, that sign was faded to the point where you about couldn't tell what it was. I mean, and we put those signs up about 15 years ago, so they probably get to be a lot more of them. It wouldn't hurt to try to get everybody to maybe update some of the stuff and remind them that they need to keep them marked. So it, it was marked then? You said it wasn't marked. Sign. It, it was it kind of well marked. off the road and the sign had, you know, faded and it's supposed to be marked on both sides of the road, but it, it at one time it had been marked, but the sign was probably six, seven feet off the road and it was faded real bad. We worked on that at night. It, you know, Miss Christine knew we had a problem there and we worked on it at night. And we were just trying to get the water to run down one side and the pipe wasn't about that deep. I mean, and we really wasn't ditching. We was just trying to get a little low side to the road and we did catch the pipe and there was an old sign on one side. That is something we need to update. Newberry Chambers? Newberry Chambers? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm talking about the wrong thing. Yeah, I grew up around that pipe real bad out there, hopefully. Oh, now Newberry Chambers yeah. wasn't marked at all. There wasn't a sign there on Newberry Chambers whatsoever. So then we should, because that falls on, on us. Right, I'm just going to call for a motion if y'all want to prepare the pipe to it, it part of it, partial, or none of it, if or, or just. I, mean, I think we should be responsible for at least half of it if if it wasn't marked or anything that falls on us. Do you want to pay for any of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah half of it. Uh, you going to put that in form of motion? No motion. No second. Uh, is all in favor? I'm against it. So we got, we got three votes to pay the labor on the repair that's that's about half of it all right so the motion carried so we're going to pay half of that right there for the labor <clears throat> any more discussion on that all right. the new business is the comprehensive plan resolution and that's page 24 and 25 we got to sign off on this tonight doug Yes, that's just a resolution saying we can go ahead and submit that plan to the Department of Community Affairs. Actually, uh, the Regional Commission submitted it. Is, just a, is this just redoing it for another three well, years? Well, he came, he came over years. here and he sat down with me and Doug and Corey and all that, and we went through all this, that whole list of stuff. And, I mean, it's something we got to redo to, I mean, to, you got to have this in place to be able to, to get that money well any, any kind of cooperation out of them yeah so we need a motion to give me permission to sign this this resolution to adopt a comprehensive plan the second I second all in favor I I motion the 5311 resolution is the southwest georgia regional commission that's page 26 through 30. that's the uh Is that the um, that's the 
the resolution to get the federal funds for the transit. To transit, yeah. Do that every year. So this is the thing. It's the same thing that we've been doing in the past. Keep the buses rolling. That same thing. I believe so. That's the transit buses. Yeah. Y'all, everybody familiar with that? No. I need a motion to give me permission to sign this resolution to keep that. So moved. Just a second. I second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, motion carried. The uh, reauthorization of the Southwest Georgia Joint Development Authority. Jamie, do you want to speak to us? Um, yes, oh, sir, yes. I wanted just to be available to answer any questions. I know there's nine pages there that um, lay out the new proposed constitution and bylaws, as well as the articles of incorporation. This was an active group. Um, it was a collaborative effort between early Seminole and Miller counties, um, probably about 20 years ago. Um, and sometimes things just fade away, and this is one of those elements that just faded away, likely due to. Um, someone just not keeping the ball rolling. But the State Department of Economic Development director had reached out to um, a group of us in Miller Early in Seminole County, had us speak together and explain the benefits. It's a fairly simple process. It's just the state authorizing the acknowledgement of this joint development authority. Um, it would allow some incentives for employers um, and new investors in the Tri County region. Um, with some job creation tax credits. And there's also elements like um, the initial rehabilitation of the State Theater in downtown Cockwood. That grant was submitted through the Joint Development Committee. So it opened, having the Joint Development Committee opens up some opportunities and funding sources through the state. It's fairly simple. Early has already uh, passed their resolution. It's the same resolution y'all have. This was Miller plugged in. Um, Donaldsonville or Seminole County has also done that um, and I spoke with Mr. Kevin Calhoun who's the chair of the Miller County Economic Development Authority um, and he and I would be willing to serve in the two Miller County positions and it's likely that we would only meet um, once a quarter and talk about opportunities uh, with the state. Does he need a point by us or do he just volunteer to be on there fine? Um, we did have a conversation yes sir um, he is willing to serve alongside me. That's, that's, we don't need to appoint him. He just, he just volunteer. Yes, right. sir. Okay. And if I don't know the answer to any of your questions, I will find out from Ms. Tina Herring, State Economic Development Office. Did y'all want to go over anything with this? Got any questions on it? What up? You were talking about. I mean, what, what a uh, job-wise. I mean, what, what would this do as far as numbers or anything to boost that? You got any to idea? The staff, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Did you, as far as creating a job, you got any idea about numbers or anything? Um, this so, might help with. Um, I don't have any specific metrics, no, sir. Um, but I do know that there are our joint development authorities set up across the state, and it helps incentivize investors. Now, Miller County is not necessarily poised for heavy industry, um, but in some of the areas that have joint development authorities, heavy industry has been recruited through the joint development authority because there are funding opportunities when the state recognizes that there's a collaborative effort between counties. But as far as any specifics, if so you it's have, kind of a vehicle to maybe get some grant money. It is. It's like the comprehensive plan y'all just talked about. You got to have that box checked off when you apply for certain funding sources, um, and it's a arduous process. The comprehensive plan. This is fairly simple. This is just saying it acknowledges that there's two people from each of the three counties that get together. They meet. There's um, uh, notes kept, votes maintained. Um, we regularly check in with our elected bodies, both the city and the county, just to acknowledge that there is conversation happening about recruitment of new employment opportunities, new businesses, no matter if they're small businesses or large scale businesses. It's fairly simple, um, but it has to come to y'all as the 
county for the resolution. And then what happens once Ms. Herring has um, Miller County's resolution, she's going to pair it with the Seminole in the early resolutions, send them to the state, and they will authorize that. It basically is an acknowledgement that there is a Southwest Georgia Joint Development Authority again. Uh, what, did it just, when it was formed back in the early 2000s, I mean, what, did it just just kind of fall through the cracks or what was, why didn't it go on? Um, I think just evolution of the people that were serving and maybe someone just didn't keep calling the meetings. I'm not really sure because it, it predates me. Um, I will say, though, that it, it appears that originally the um, Chamber of Commerce for Cockwood Miller County um, held the bank account. There's about $1,300 in a long-standing bank account that has remained untouched since the, um, the joint authority was dissolved. Not necessarily dissolved, just unauthorized anymore. Right. I think people change roles and they... Like I said, no one just picked up the ball and ran with it in any of the three counties. There's a lot of changeover, um, especially in Early County right now with a new county manager or city manager. Um, and the lady in Seminole County, um, she's not been in her position very long. So what I do know about the Joint Development Authority is just from dusting off some old records at the Chamber Office after Ms. Tina here and contacted. Y'all plan to meet and elect the officers and first one thing or is that some of that already been done? There has not. We were waiting for the county governments to um, approve the resolution that just acknowledges the formation. Have, have they got all their members appointed already? Yes, sir. The two other counties now. What, what do we need to do with this to give you to go ahead? Anything? I just need Mr. Coffey to stamp y'all's signatures on that resolution if that's how that happens. Um, and then if y'all sign it, date it, I'll get a copy from him and submit it to the state to show that Miller County will participate in the Southwest Georgia Joint Development Authority. Uh, we need a motion to go forward with this. I'll make it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Thank y'all. Motion we'll keep you updated. Uh, appreciate it. The uh, next thing we got, Ms. Robin, you want to talk to us about a couple of things? Sure. Um, this, the uh, fueling station, the hospital would like to participate in um, in the purchasing of, um, of fuel for our vehicles only. Um, there's a contract that I've got, but we failed to get it up to Doug for this meeting today. Um, but we understand that it would be a good believe it's 10% over the cost of the fuel. Um, it would just be hospital on our vehicles. Now the second item um, is the um, is the rental of the senior center. Um, as you guys probably will recall about a year and a half ago the hospital authority entered into a rental agreement for the um, for the senior center on Devore Street on the view. Um, I have a, an extension of that rental agreement with me. That agreement actually lapsed, and we have continued to pay the, the rent for the building. It's roughly a little bit more than $31,000 a year. But the hospital would like to actually acquire that <laughs> bill formally. Um, not right now, although that's great. I mean, we certainly can. Um, but I would like for us to acquire it from the county for the purpose of expanding our elder care services. Um, that's what the hospital is all about. Um, the population is aging. Um, there is a program that I'd like to put in there that would help our aging population. Um, it would help our underinsured individuals. Um, it's a Medicaid program, so people who don't have the resources sometimes um, to pay for some of the medical care, um, Medicaid would cover this. And it is basically, ultimately, the program that I want to put in there is an adult day care program. Okay. That program is basically designed to avoid long-term care um, placement. So during the day, the hospital and our staff would care for individuals who are otherwise um, 
at that level of care where they need supervision, they need some medical care, um, but they're not yet ready. They don't want to be um, committed into a long-term care facility. This would provide um, daytime. It's just like child care, except for it's, it's adults. Um, so I'd like to um, like the county to um, consider selling that building to us. Or <clears throat> the uh, it had been mentioned about opening it up to the public to the seniors for like one day a week. Is that is that something that maybe you did ask me specifically about that last week, and that is a possibility to do one day a week um, for the community. But the whole program is really about the community. Right. And you would help them get them get them signed up if they came. Like, is that signed up into what? Into this program, like community people. Yes. I mean, today we're providing enabling services already for community people. Um, you know, who need who fall between the gaps, need Medicare, Medicaid don't know how to apply for it, so we do that already. Um, this is a, a group of people, for example, if, if my mother was alive and I'm working like I'm working today, she would need some kind of oversight. I live with my aunt, who really does. Um, and so this would provide a 10 to 12 hour period where an elderly person, or it could be somebody who's even mentally challenged in some way with a behavioral health problem, but it would give people, in, in, you know, in, in that kind of category, the opportunity to be basically supervised during the day, entertained during the day, their mind kept active during the day. There would be some medical care that is available in the facility for them. And I can continue to work as a CEO, as opposed to leaving my job because of a, a family member. I'll right. also tell you that the government is really pushing this. Um, so it, the, these things are cropping up all over. All right. Y'all got any, did she tell you what you needed to know? You got any more questions on that right there? Well, or, my suggestion is maybe we need to get some of the senior citizens that are involved in that place down there and get their input on this thing. How they feel about it. <clears throat> Robin, you want to, you want to, how soon you need to know about this? Well, I would prefer to know sooner rather than later. Like, um, would, it, would, would next meeting month be okay or we need to? Um, if you guys can't make a decision today, then we can postpone it for another month. Um, but, I, but there are you know, there's a lot of work that I have to do, and my intention would be to get this thing up and running by next summer. And um, and there's not a lot of time there for me to do that. Right now, we're already we're about to hit November, and you might as well figure that the state and federal government November December is dead. And then I've got to go after licenses and certificates of need and things of that nature. So I'm already kind of up against it. I uh, should got an agreement here, and uh, we need to renew the agreement because uh, it's actually been lapsed. If you want the if you want the money to keep coming in for her renting the building, I'm gonna pay it all. Out. Have you got a you got a copy of the agreement? Y'all got one? Yeah, we have one. All right, and there's a there's a lease purchase option in this. So I personally think we need to get seniors involved in this thing, get their input on it before we do anything. All right, what's the rest of y'all's feelings on it? So we'll go ahead and lease it. Can you do that? Yeah. 
we need to continue the rental agreement on things. Y'all want the money to keep coming in because we tentatively, we can verbally agree to that right there and then act on this. If y'all want to postpone it, we need to verbally agree to let her lease this thing. How long is it for this time? Is it for another year? Is that what it is? Months long? When you read it in section two, now he's got it. Yeah, month to month. Mm -hmm. Month to month, okay. Ms. Robert? It says after completion of the initial one year, this is to lease it for one, one more year if I'm reading it right. Mm -hmm. It automatically renew on a month to month basis unless terminated. Is that right? Yes. Y'all want to verbally agree to that? Do we need a motion? We need a motion to do that right there, and then we can, we can just take this back up next month about the, the signing off on this actual whole agreement here. Is that is that doable? Well, I, I'll respectfully ask, so how do we communicate with the seniors? What is the forum for doing that? What, how, how did you want to go about, if, if this went into effect tonight, how, how would you go about doing doing that? Do we need to communicate with them or, or, or do you want to? Well, I wasn't going to. It wasn't my suggestion right. to communicate with them. All right, Alan, what do what you want to do? I'm for communicate with the senior and find out what they got on the mind about this thing because they were basically told within a year. That we would take a look at it and make the funding available even before that year was up. But there's there's not any funding, is there? Well, I don't know if they, any. if they have any funding to sell or anything. I just think you need to. How you want to communicate with them? I think it's where yeah, we're headed. How do, how, do you, how do you propose to communicate with them? Call someone. <clears throat> well, I know they got a pretty good uproar before about this thing. I don't want them to feel left out and didn't have no say so about it, period. Well, it's kind of shut down because of COVID. The funding went away for the director, and there's no funding for that. The meal voucher, that program's still going on. They they get the meal just like they've been getting them. But there's not, from, from me talking to the woman, her name's Izzy, can't think of her last name, there's no fund. That director part ain't coming back. They're not going to fund that. And there's not any of these other counties around here, they some of these buildings, most all of them have been reassigned and the one over there in Baker County, they rented out like a community center. Well, I, I'm not saying what she's talking about, not a good idea. I'm not saying that. I just don't want the seniors to be left, feel like they left out of this thing again. And then, because we've done it the first time, we should have consulted with somebody. Well, it, was, it was shut down, Alan. I mean, it was going to be sitting there vacant. It wasn't going to open back up. Open doors wasn't going to open back up. That was a way to get $30-something thousand dollars a year. Well, she approached us about wanting to, because Dion had nowhere to go. And now you got physical therapy that stayed in the county. And when they get the, the building completed over yonder, that's going to make a transition over there. And she's talking about wanting to start this senior program up. And that may be putting something down yonder that may not ever be, because I I mean, unless there's some way to get some funding, it can't open back up the way it was. <clears throat> well, I said, that's, that's my take on it. I just think that they should be involved in it and find out what the feeling is. So, if I can just say one more thing. Okay, so um, by April of next year, I will have completed the construction of that new medical office building. When I'm done with that, I will vacate the senior building. So, Unless I know that I have <clears throat> that ability to buy it, I will move on real quickly. And if that answer is no real soon, then I will start to look at construction. Now, because so, April is around the corner for me. Right. So, maybe if we 
have a meeting next week. I'm my early in the week after that right there. I, I ain't gonna be at no meeting unless it rains. Uh, so there's a potential that this 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 what Miss Robin's talking about <clears throat> could actually be helping to some of the seniors that were in that program before. I mean, is there a possibility of that? That's exactly what. The, I mean, I mean and it's going to be giving them something not, to do. This is not a new conversation. A year and a half ago, I had this conversation. And so, um, so we could, those people who are already displaced, mm -hmm. they could have, had I opened up a center, they could have already been involved and engaged. Many so it, of the same people, so it's going whoever they are, if they're the same people that I know, that the hospital used to go in and provide them with some education, some counseling, things of that nature, if they are the same seniors, then many of them would take advantage of adult debt. Okay, so to sum it all up, if, if, if we don't let her know something pretty quick, she's going to make plans to, to do her own building somewhere else, and then that... This deal is going to be off. The rent's going to go away, and you got the opportunity to make a sale on the building. So you need to consider that too. No, I'm considering all of it. All right. Well, the, you got thirty thousand dollars a year that you're going to have to come up with that we've been getting just just been going into the general fund as revenue. So, and we ain't got no money to be paying. Hiring a director, you can't just open the door down yonder and, and, and say, "Here it is." Somebody's somebody's got to be an authority down there. Yeah, I'm just saying, speaking of me personally, I would like to hear what they've got to say about the situation. <clears throat> Y'all do whatever you want to do, you know. But I'm just saying that's the way I feel about the seniors. All right. Monday or Tuesday next week. Y'all want to have a meeting? With them. Yes. Well, it needs to be publicized that, that, that that's, we'll have like a public hearing, whatever you want to call it. It won't be a vote meeting, it'll just be that. Is that agreeable? That's fine. All right. What, what's what's y'all's schedule? All right. Which day you want to have it? Because I don't need to do it in the past, nothing past Tuesday. Six. Which day? Monday. 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 We need to do it at six. On Monday. Monday. What about you, lady? All right. Is there any more discussion about that? Ms. Robin, you got anything else you want to add to that? Or y'all got any questions for her about any of this? All right. We, we're going to. Before we do anything, we're going to verbally agree. We need a motion to continue with this lease agreement. I make the motion. Second. Yes, second. All in favor? All right. And this, this right here will be finalized, yes or no. You want it, would it be all right at the next meeting or we need to do? You know, the next meeting is fine. Okay. I, I won't be here next week. Okay. So I mean, we just, this, the other meeting yeah. with the seniors is yeah. just a public hearing thing. Right. We, when we get there. But I won't be there if you, if you need me to be. All right. I won't be. We'll vote on this at the next regular county commissioner's meeting. Is that okay? That'll be fine. All right. Is there anything else we need to go over? If not, we need anything with the department heads. Doug, you got anything else? All right. If not, we need a motion to adjourn. I make the motion to adjourn. I'll second. All the favor. All right, we adjourn.